Well, hey, friends, subscribers, internet strangers. What's up? All right, you're waiting for some, one of the Budweiser cartoons. <laughs> I had to put one at this time. I got to keep you looking and keep you guessing, right? So today I just want to come to you and talk to you about a subject that is is as all the with the popularity of you know Shane and I well actually I did the first one and Shane started doing some later um, the first Walgreens video I did in August it was one of the first videos to come out and show you in doing retail arbitrage in the store exactly what I was buying and I didn't make another one for a while that one got quite a few views and then the Monopoly video went nuts and so you know, I, I saw that there was an audience that I could, you know, could could help a lot of people out. So, what is the the negative to a video of this type? Um, there are a lot of people who watch this for the first time, want to get into this business, want to do reselling, want to sell on eBay and Amazon, and that is outstanding. You know, you, you know, turn your side hustle into a job. You know, maybe you've been selling at flea markets or something, and you want to get into the online game. That is awesome, but. It is a very dangerous proposition to a new person who doesn't understand pricing. I would consider pricing, you know, understanding pricing is vital to the success of your business. And you must think through pricing and, and understand it. Just throwing a price up there to say, you know, first of all, what 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 is your goal? Is your goal to sell something? If your goal is to sell something, by all means, throw it up there for a dollar. You've done that. You sold it. Uh, but for the most part, most everyone's goal is to make money, to make a net profit. And so you have to understand the fees that are involved on eBay and Amazon and how to calculate all that in to come up with a price that leaves you money left over. You know, if you got an item that you pay $10 for and you sell it for, say, 13 and it's eBay free shipping, there is really no physical way to make, um, because especially with the new shipping prices, Unless you send it in a stamped envelope, that would be the only way. Um, but it's, you know, the price has to include your cost, any fees you're going to incur, and then what's left is is your profit. And it's just, as I've, as I've looked at eBay listings, I've looked at a lot of Amazon listings, it's very frustrating because it's something no one talks about. Um, you know, do, do people understand how to correctly price something? Instead of just putting some crazy low ball price up there, or even worse, going on the Amazon and and saying, "Well, look, that's the lowest price now. I'm just going to match that guy." You know, every time I see a crazy low ball price where I'm I'm holding my price at a higher price to wait for these guys to sell out, you know, they'll have one feedback, they'll have two, they'll have less than ten feedback on Amazon, which means they haven't sold a whole lot. Feedback is harder to get, and so if you've only got three or four, I mean, it means you could have had some good sales. But chances are, whenever I see those people that with prices, um, you know, they're doing merchant fulfilled because they've never done Amazon FBA. You know, they don't truly understand pricing. You know, they're they're sell, they're doing enough to sell it and ship it, and then there's nothing left. And um, so I just want to talk about that. Um, that track your the one thing that I, as a, I would counsel a new person to do is instead of tracking what you're doing in net sales, track it in versus of net profit. You know, you know, it's it's good to have that. So if I, I sold a hundred dollars and I made thirty five, you know, a thirty five percent return, that is very respectable. So you know, you need to start versing yourself. And sorry if you see my hand pop up on a green screen. Which, by the way, is just a beach scene I pulled off of the internet. Just for all you guys that are stuck in that cold weather and are wondering if the beach season will ever make it again. It hit 75 here today in Alabama, so... <laughs> that would give me the idea. It's all, it, it's 75 today. Uh, in, in today's video, let's throw up a beach scene. <laughs> so, um, so, what are you working so hard for? So you can get to the beach, so you can enjoy this weather, so you can enjoy the warm weather time with your friends and family. So it's, it's, it's vitally crucial, you know, to the health of your business that, that you understand pricing 
and how it affects every other number. You know, it should be a, con and it naturally is a main concern when you're sourcing an item. You know, just because I have made a Dollar Tree video and said, you know, there's money in this, this, and this item right now, doesn't mean you should go out and buy all of that without checking the pricing and understanding that if it hits one of my videos at the current subscriber number I have, which I'm, I'm blessed to have a ton of subscribers. And I, I do, do greatly, greatly appreciate that. There is a better chance than not that that price is going to substantially decrease for a, a short amount of time. And you, know, you have to understand that, um, operate with a repricer, the vast majority of Amazon sellers operate with repricers and you know, if you understand your prices, ah, uh, there's a helicopter going by overhead. Don't they know I'm making a video? Uh, <laughs> they work on the Blackhawk helicopters here at the, at the airport that I live near. So, um, and they, they come and go, especially on Wednesday for some reason. I don't, I don't understand why, but that's all right. That's their business. Hope they keep them flying, uh, keep the country safe. So let's see. So my repricer, you know, if, if I bought that $10 item, and I wanted to make say the minimum I wanted to make them was five five dollars. I would I would take the price. You know, if it's that's probably going to be close to twenty four dollars. And just estimating on Amazon and my in my experience, it's going to be close to twenty four twenty five dollars because by the time you take out roughly twenty six to twenty eight percent fees, and that includes shipping and everything, final value, credit cards, everything. Um, you know that's. It's generally a good rule of thumb for Amazon is the three times rule. If you have a product that is $10 and you want to make $10, you need to sell it for 30. And that has been a rule that's been around a while and you're pretty safe. And the one thing that I tell New York sellers is the three times rule also protects you in case that price drops, you know, so instead of making 10 at worst, you'll make five, six, seven. Um, but so if I want that, so I would set that pretty pricer to keep the price at $25 as the minimum. And then the maximum I would set at some arbitrary number, like say 50, because on Amazon, if you don't, if you don't set a maximum and you're one of the last ones in and the rate pricer can take it to crazy numbers, three, four, 500, and then Amazon's just going to close the listing, um, due to the being so, so, so out, out of, out of touch high that it's just going to negatively affect the customer if they happen to buy one, which they're not going to buy a ten dollar item for five hundred dollars but worse things have happened so 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 why is that item that i've showed on a video going to going to drop um i know in school a lot of people economics was not your subject um but basically it's the capitalistic economy at work um naturally if i if i if i say something there are a lot of people who are going to go buy it and throw it on amazon or throw it on ebay either one and and so that's going to increase the supply of the product the pro the product is there's going to be more available so in order that that increased supply on on the in in a capitalist economy pushes the price down and you know we call them price droppers we call them everything else but it's really the the true market is is uh leading that price down to begin with because there's an increased supply and then as all that sells through and starts sales up and, and the supply starts coming back to normal, the price will normalize. And then on the other side, as there is less of it available, the price will rise because the, as the su supply decreases, price increases. Um, so that is just a economics 101. And you have to be aware of this. You know, the, the one thing I would tell you is a lot of stuff I show you is for examples, you know, how, you know, we're doing Dollar Tree challenges and Shane and I were both just going in Dollar Tree scanning, just looking at, looking at items that we thought, you know, there might be some great interest in this. There might be, you know, Dollar Tree has some nice closeouts from time to time too. The books are an interesting thing because they have lots of different books. You know, they'll change from store to store. They'll change from week to week. So the books will the books will come and go. Um, you can get the books three or four weeks, and they will completely cycle through to another set. So you know that's just a temporary thing, but that that's something you can check over and over. You know the the seed. You now that should give you an, an idea. Dollar Tree does a nice job of putting out seasonal products. So if the the flowers and, and those kind of seeds and stuff were were popular, 
hey, what about the next one that comes out? Whatever the next season is, whatever the next event is, you know, could it be St. Patrick's Day, Easter? You know, that, that should give you the idea that, you know, that, that's the whole purpose of doing these things is, is to teach you to go, hey, if I saw that a seasonal thing was good, you know, not the, so it's not to teach you the exact item, not to go out and go, oh my God, he said, he said buy this. He never said buy a thing. He said there's money in this right this second. But, you know, a lot of people are just going to go, oh, got to go back. And it's not just me. There are other people making videos as well. So I just wanted to talk about, talk about price and how if you get the price wrong and then you don't make money, guess what? <laughs> You're not going to be in business very long. And so, you know, a lot of people ask, how did you know what the price to item? Um, and that is, that is my, my pricing and how I come across pricing. The minimum price is... I take the item. I mean, there are some items that are completely different where you get it so such a cheap amount of money that you know you need to look at historical charts. Say, Keepa.com. I would say Camo, but right now they're currently defunct. They're having a server issue. So, but but on you can look at the graphs where they go up and down, and you can see how much each of these items have sold for in the past. And if that item is not available, look up a similar item, something that is very close that you can get a good good range. So, like the Anoyatrons. The Anoyatrons were a good example. Shane and I picked up a bunch of them. Um, we picked them up for $3.69. So, if I just wanted a, you know, a 50% return on them, you know, I can sell those stupid things for $10, $11 and make money on $3. But, but when you look at the charts, they were selling for $33, $34 when we picked them up because only one store had them left. They're not made anymore. And so now what happened? A lot of people saw the videos, went out and, and bought them and decided they took the price down to like 12 bucks. So where should you have been? If you're happy with making three or four dollars on those three dollars, hey, awesome. That is a great thing. You, you know, you did exactly what you wanted. But I would argue when an item is so hard to find, the the supply is naturally low do not allow a temporary blip of someone who has dropped the price and artificial uh just kind of mess with the econ economics of it and have artificially dropped the price because the supply has not changed the supply is still low 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 so price should still be high but they're oh my god i gotta be first i gotta sell it you know that is that as a reseller that should not be if, if you're looking to raise money for vacations, part-time, or if you're looking to support a family and do full-time, support yourself, either, you know, whatever your personal scenario is, you know, you should be looking at maximum money, maximum profit. You know, think through this. Um, I still had a bunch left when they were at $12. You didn't see my reprice or chase it. <laughs> and my, re my reprice was set a minimum of 25 And so, you know, that's like 15 or 16 $17 profit per each one. You know, I'm making more in profit than they were selling for the selling the item for. So it's sorry, I've got a little bit of cold left over. So it's 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 vitally important that you understand when you look at an item, understand how much of it is there out there. You know, is this an item that you can buy every day at Walmart? Well, then you, your price is you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to double up a lot of times, but if, but you can make thirty percent, forty percent. That's perfectly fine because you can go buy them over and over and over and over. The supply is not going to change. The price is what it is, um, but and the availability is not going to change. So I just wanted to talk about this for a minute because it is it is frustrating to see people put uh, just the price things and you know to match others. You know that's on eBay matching others what they've sold items for is a generally a good idea and I think that's where the problem lies is where the people who don't understand how to price on Amazon versus eBay because on eBay you can see actually completed you know this widget sold for X amount of dollars I have the same widget you know I can expect to get somewhere close to that maybe a few dollars more maybe a few dollars less but in the same ballpark range and you know that is a great pricing model that is that is that is because you're actually looking at the number that it sold for. Amazon, you don't have that number. You have a range. You have a rank, and you ha you see what it is. And so, looking at the keeper charts is your only answer to the you know people 
don't discount eBay. They give you a lot of information to make buying decisions on and pricing decisions that you don't get on Amazon. So, you know, you're, re you're relying on third parties, third party vendors to and websites to tell you what the item sold for. And so with the lack of with the lack of that, you know, I'm 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 assuming that an eBay seller and you know assuming is never good. So for this scenario, we're just assuming. Um, you know, there's I have nobody in particular. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm not talking about any seller. I'm not throwing any names out. None of that stuff. It's just what just my personal observations that you know they will look and and, and an eBay seller who is transitioning and trying to mix Amazon in, which I wholeheartedly agree with. You should have spread yourself out on multiple platforms in order to, you know, alleviate the risk of if, what if happens if something happens to one of your accounts. So, you know, if they look over there and go, hell, well, the price is $5. That must be what it's selling for. You know, and then, and then they put it $5 and then, you know, without thinking about, well, I paid three for it. I sold it for five. You know, the minimum, I, the minimum, the most I'm going to get back by Amazon FBA if I sold something for five and it's under a pound is like 80 cents that's not a lot left and so they they didn't understand the fees they didn't understand the pricing you know maybe that's somebody who was especially this month february coming up is a difficult month to price in on amazon because there will be a lot of people who are trying to avoid long terms long-term storage fees which come across on the 21st 20th so any items that have been there i think this is the last of the six month ones if i'm wrong i'm, I'm sorry but I, I know I say this is the yearly. Um, if anything that's been there a year is going to get hit with a substantial fee, and you can find that information out on the front of the seller center on the bottom right hand corner where the inventory section is, you can click on that. There's so there'll, there'll be something in there about this number of items that's going to. You have this many items that are going to incur long term storage fees. So there are a lot of people who are lowering that price substantially because they would rather sell it. At ten percent, twenty percent gain, whatever it is, even in order then then pay any storage fees. So you know that's that's going to be what they're trying to do is they're trying to liquidate on Amazon in order not to pay the fees. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to. You know I can't explain the price. It's it's hard to each individual person's uh, situation is different and and what they need and what they desire. But you know I just wanted to just stress the importance of. You know, not following the herd. You know, make up something that is that is truly your way. Um, no, sorry, that was this MacBook. That was a, that was a text coming through my MacBook um, that hadn't even showed up on the phone yet. But it's it's just you have to you have to understand what is right for you. And you know, sometimes you know I'll find an item out out, and it'll be an item that is hard, hard, hard to find. And someone it'll, it'll say it's a ten dollar item, and somebody's got it for two hundred dollars. And I, I mentioned I'm gonna cut them folks at the knees. You know, so I'll sell it for ninety nine. You know, that's acceptable to me to, to to price it where I think is maximum that I can get it and and sell it in a in a reasonable amount of time. You know, it, it's a ten dollar item. You know, do I listen to people go? It's not fair. I can't believe you're actually charging somebody thirty dollars for a ten dollar item. You got to get all that out of your head. None of that matters. That is, people pay for convenience on Amazon. People pay for it to be shipped two days. They don't have to go hunt it. They don't have to go to the mall. They don't have to go to Walmart. They don't have to go wherever. You know, the item just shows up when they get home, and they're 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 plenty happy to pay extra for it in order not to have to go get it. So, the price the price is independent of what it what it's what you paid for it. You know, you really truly need to set a price that. That that re recovers your money, gives you a profit, and wants to sell in a reasonable amount of time. That you know, those are perfect products. They can meet those three goals. That you got the profit you wanted, you sold the item, and it was in a reasonable time. You know, that is pr that is pretty much that. For my definition of a perfect product. So, so everyone's situation is different. I just wanted you, especially if you're newer and watching this, and if you got any questions, you can put them in the chat uh, in the in the comments below. And I, I'll do my best to answer them. And there are a lot of uh, good people who watch my videos who answer a lot of questions in the, in the chat. And for the most part, they give you 100% correct answers. So, um, And I appreciate the people who take the time to answer a lot of the questions because I get a lot of comments and sometimes I miss them. But it's prices extraordinarily important. You know, you need to learn 
and make some make some goals and make some decisions for your business and then price accordingly price correctly so that that you make money in an item and be prepared to sit and wait you know how long i've been waiting to sell shane's been out of an oyatron's i'm still in an oyatron selling out and he got them in faster he sold them at a higher price price dropped on me i'm waiting and i will sell them at the same price it'll just take me a little longer so you know it takes some buying capital you know which that's another topic altogether is cash flow and buying capital how does waiting affect your cash flow you know waiting to sell an item negative negatively affects your cash flow because you don't have it available it's tied up in inventory until you sell it but that's a cash flow is another video um so i hope, I hope this conversation with myself <laughs> and my imaginary my imaginary uh youtube friends there and the camera um has, has helped you out just get you thinking about what's the correct way to price you know just because someone on youtube says hey go buy this which i'll never say i'll show you what i bought I'll show you that there was money in it when I bought it and just understand that when I tell you these things, I will hold until I get that money because I'm, I've been doing this a long time. I've got a buying budget and I've got cash flow enough to sustain, you know, their fast selling items and slow out selling items. And I didn't even get into the fast nickel slow dime theory. You know, there's lots of people who subscribe to a theory called the fast nickel which means you sell it sell it really quickly for less because you're going to buy and buy and buy over and over. The the slow dime is, you know, hold it for maximum price. And either theory, there's pluses and minuses on both theories. Uh, you can do it either, either way you want. I seem to be in the middle. I'm like the, the medium seven cent piece. <laughs> I've got quite a few items that are, that are fast nickels that sell very quickly that I get the money back and reinvest, reinvest. And I've got others that I am holding out for maximum profit because either they're really, really hard to find or they're the price is not to where I need it to be. So I will hold until that price gets there. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, I hope it, I hope it let, truly, I've been trying to close this out for what, three times now. I hope it truly makes sense and I hope uh, it helps you in your business as you move forward and try to try to understand that it's, it's not about what you sold. This game is not about I sold 10 items. This item is about, I told you, I sold 10 items and made $500. It's about the made part. All right. Like, comment, subscribe, share. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching these videos. And as always, hey, look at all this. You know it's going to be a roll tide, right?